Welcome back to our workshop. There's a lot of confusion out there about wood fillers and wood putty for woodworking. And if you're working on furniture repairs, it gets even more complex. I'm going to walk you through all the products that I use in my furniture repair business so you'll understand the right tool for the job you're working on. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. There are a lot of different products on the market to help woodworkers fill flaws in woodwork and in finished pieces as well. Here I've got a real mix of them and the marketing unfortunately is a little bit misleading and a little bit confusing. Let me walk you through each of these so you can understand what they are and what they're used for. Let me show you a close-up of each of these so you can see what they are. I'm going to focus my camera in close, so I think the background is going to go blurry. This is a DAP product called Wood Patch. This is an Elmer's product, and it's labeled as a wood filler. This is a Minwax product, and this is a wood putty. This is Quickwood, and this is labeled as an epoxy putty. Then we get into some of the sticks. This is a Minwax stick. This is described as a filler. This is an older product I have. We can see here this is called a putty pencil and in French it's crayon. Here I've got one that's the labels worn off but it's a putty stick filler. So there's a lot of terminology here that's blending across them. This is a wax stick and here I've got some Mohawk um, burn-in sticks. So what do you use for what job? Well, let's separate these into some categories. These products are meant for two really different things. One of them is bare wood, where you're doing some woodworking and you have some flaws, or you've got a finished piece that has a finish on it. So when you've got wood filler here and here, even though this is called wood patch, these are products that I would use on bare wood. And that is, you put them on the wood, you sand it down, you apply your stain, your finish, and you're disguising a flaw in the bare wood. These products are not intended for that. What we've got here is a wood putty. And a putty is something that, if you look up in the dictionary, is something that's malleable, and when you let it sit, it will harden to a certain degree. So this wood putty is good for fixing flaws. And you can actually take different colors. I've got three different colors here and blend them together to get the color that you're looking for to dial it right in. The quick wood is another putty. This is an epoxy putty. And the difference between these two is, well, this is good for nail holes and scratches. It can't hold structure. Uh, quick wood can do that. So if you've got the outside corner of something where you've got a chunk missing or maybe a carving, uh, quick wood is good for that because it will, when it dries, be as hard as wood. And what it is, is a tube of two different mixtures so you slice off a section that you want, you work it all together into one, and this will dry in about 30 minutes, and it will cure in about 60 minutes. It's a really handy product to have, so I keep that in my repair kit for service calls. If we take the putties and set them aside, what we're left here is what I consider wax sticks. Some of them are called pencils, some of them are called crayons, and I'll give you an example of how this works on a repair project I did. This one, uh, I think is going to give me a good match. I can touch it up after as well. And it's just a matter of rubbing it onto the void back and forth and working it into that spot. Then what I do is take a rag and just buff off what's there. Seems like there's a bit of glue or something here. Maybe that was the tape from the previous repair. Yeah, there's some glue, dried glue there. So this is considered a soft wax. Uh, here they call it a filler, it's a stick. 
here it's called a fill, here it's called a putty pencil. Really these are soft waxes that get worked into a flaw. These two here are much different. These you need to use heat to melt the wax. And if you look at a kit like this, you've got a number of different colors that you can use. And let me show you an example of why you would want many different colors when you're doing a repair. I'm working on a wheel here where I've repaired it and there's a couple of cracks. There's one here, here, and here. And I need to disguise those cracks. So I'm using burn-in sticks. These are hard wax sticks and you use heat. I'm using a soldering iron here. And what I'm gonna do is melt those in. Now frequently, you've got all these different colors. Uh, you can buy packs and packs of these to get a, a rainbow, but not one color is going to work because of the variation in wood. So I'm gonna start with uh, this dark one and see how it works. And what I can do is lighten it up with this one if I need to. Um, because these melt to a liquid state, uh, it's easy to blend the color, just like mixing paints. The soldering iron tip is a point, and what I do is put the tip down and melt the wax on it. And you can see here how quickly the wax melts. It just turns into a liquid. So what I do is just put the point down and that directs the flow of the liquid. And I could just drag that across there. Just like that. This dries in about 30 seconds and you just need to take a plastic card. This is just an old room key card and you need to drag that across and what you're doing is leveling out the wax. And what I like to do is just gently pull it across first to get the high points off and then I go across the grain and scrape the surface. If you've got a big chunk like this, you don't want to push that right off because it will break. You want to gently wear that down. You don't want to pull it out of the groove. So once you've got it leveled out, again just rub it across. And then what you can do is inspect the area and see how your color matches. So it's looking to me slightly red. So I'm gonna get a little bit of brown. So the color I was using was uh, Heartwood Cherry. And this one is called a True Brown. So what I'm going to do is put the point back down into that groove. You can see here I, I'm able to very easily reactivate that wax. And I'm going to put a little bit of the true brown in there. And just knock down that red color a little bit. Okay, I'll let that dry, and we'll try it again. I've got a bit of residue coming off over here. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. It's a little bit darker than the surrounding wood, but you can see here, I've got some natural grain that's working that way anyway. So I'm happy with that. I'll just buff it out a little bit and we're good to go. Now that I've gotten into these harder waxes, I rarely use the softer waxes. In fact, I carry this in my repair kit when I do service calls. It allows me to get the right color tone, but also in larger fills, 
I can get variation in color that mimics the grain pattern in the wood. So I find this as a much better product than these softer ones. I've got one more demonstration for you, and that's using wood filler. I was doing a repair on a chair where the pieces didn't come together well. So I had to sand them down and I was down to bare wood. I used that opportunity to put in some wood filler because I needed to stain the area anyway. Let me show you how that's done. So this is where I did that glue up. It matched really well here, but there's a bit of a height difference here. So I need to smooth that out. But as I'm looking closer now, I can actually see there used to be a break here and that was repaired. And there used to be a break here and that was repaired. So this whole chair must have been broken at some point and someone would put it back together. Unfortunately, when they repaired this piece up here, they didn't do a very good job of aligning it. So I have to even that out and then we'll stain it. And then I need to test the finish to see what finish needs to go on top of this. The section down here is slightly higher than this section. So the best tool for the job to level that out is to use a spoke shave. You could use a chisel with it, uh, but a spoke shave will give you a much smoother profile. So it's probably going to take me down to about here. Uh, I'm going to have some bare wood to deal with. actually not that far so that's not too bad a few more passes just to even it out okay that's good now some 120 grit sandpaper and get this all smooth I'll just work it in here, leave it a little bit proud, and then once it's dried, come back and sand it, and then I can touch it up with a stain. Sprayed on three coats of lacquer and in between sanded it with a 400 grit paper. Of these three pieces, it was the bottom one that was broken. The tenons were broken off at both ends. Now this is rock solid chair and the break across here and here is concealed. And you can just barely see a couple old breaks here. This one is a larger scar. So I'll touch that up before I'm done here. Here in the back of the chair, this was broken here and here. And you can see it's much better repair than the previous one here and these two spots. I rarely use a wood filler on something that is stained and finished. It's more common that I use it on painted trim or even painted cabinets. Let me show you an example. I'm using a DAP filler here. This is water-based. And what I'm doing is just working it into that crack across. If you pull this way, you'll pull into the crack, but if you go across the crack, it forces the filler in there. Do the same thing up here. I'm just going to add a big gob. And this is just like doing drywall mud. Now, the difference here is I'm going to leave this high and then sand it down. Normally with drywall mud, you want to go on thin coats. You see if I pull that, it's just pulling it out of the divot. In my opinion, this is where wood filler is really useful. You're painting a surface, so you're really just concerned about the texture. You don't need to worry about matching colors. When you put a primer on, you put some paint on, that flaw just disappears. So this is the power of wood filler. I hope you found these examples useful. I'll provide a link to some of these products in the video description below, as well as our Patreon link. Our Patreons are helping us with our video production work to make videos like this possible for you. Their names are over here. Thank you, Patreons, for making this possible. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can click over here, click on the bell icon, and you get notified every time we publish a video. Please give this a thumbs up to let YouTube know this is a quality video, and they'll promote it to more people so they can learn about wood fillers and wood putty. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <music>